Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna unbox the brand new Springfield Armory Echelon. Before we get started, I'd like to ask everybody to please subscribe and tell a friend about the channel. Every subscriber helps the channel grow. Now let's get on with the unboxing. So let's open up this box and see what comes inside when you purchase an Echelon. So as you can see, it comes in this cardboard box. When we lift this up, there's your normal bag that you get when you purchase a Springfield pistol. Set this aside. In here, this is where your accessories are. So you can see you have a mag loader and this is a 20 round magazine. It says 17, but they put this extender on there so it makes it a 20 rounder. It also comes with an extra extender so you can make the 17 round flush mag that's inside the pistol right now into a 20 round mag as well. These are the pins for the Viz system. These are the pins that you would use to put inside the uh, slide. So this way you could pretty much use any optic that you have uh, just by using these pins and no mounting plate. I'll go a little bit more into detail later on about this. It also comes with two different back straps. Uh, so it looks like this one's a large and this one's a small. So you can change out the back straps to make it fit better in your hand. And it also comes with a pistol lock. So let's close this up, set this aside. Now let's get into the bag and see what's in here. Open this up. And there's the echelon. So this is the 17 round mag I was telling you about. You can swap this floor plate for this one and it'll make it another 20 round mag. So let's remove this flag. There's the flag. So anyway, now that we have everything unboxed, what I'll do is I'll go over all the specs for the pistol. And then after that, I will use this in my course of fire classes and I'll get a sense of what I like and what I don't like for the pistol and do a full review. Also at the very end of this video, I'll do a size comparison between this pistol and some of the other pistols I have on hand just to show you the size difference. So let's go through some of the specs of this pistol. The Echelon comes with a 4.5 inch hammer forged barrel. This version has the U-notch that they have on the Hellcat and the front has a trinium sight with a luminescent ring around it. Moving on to the serrations, this is the one thing I really like about this pistol so far, is just the feeling of the serrations. So I usually like actuate the slide from the front of the slide. You can see my finger kind of like just falls into place right where this little swoop is. So it just falls right into place. And it gives me that nice ledge to actuate the slide. And then moving to the rear, they have like these ears on the end. So if you want to slingshot it, like this, you can. Uh, but I would say that the serrations are deep enough where you get plenty of grip. No matter where you're gonna try to grip the slide from, you're gonna get enough grip to actuate the slide. So that's a thumbs up. And Springfield is trying something brand new, which is something that we talked about earlier when we were unboxing this pistol, and it's uh, using these pins. So from what the literature says, the pins that are given in these bags, you can take this plate off Put the pins in different positions and depending on the position you put them in depends on what optic will be compatible with that position so from my understanding it'll be compatible with over 30 different optics which is great and the reason why is because it saves you money you don't have to buy a mounting plate for your optic the other benefit that you get from this system is that now that you don't have that extra plate to make the optics sit higher that means the chance of you being able to co-witness with your iron sights is much higher so that's good i really like that i'm excited to try out this new viz system the other thing that seems really cool about this pistol is that they added a COG system. COG stands for Central Operating Group, which means that there's this one piece that's inside the pistol, and that piece that's inside there is the only thing that's serialized. That means that that's the gun. All the pieces surrounding it aren't registered as the gun. So if you wanna upgrade or customize the pistol, it makes it a little bit easier because you could buy a bigger or smaller grip, bigger or smaller slide, so on and so forth, and have all that stuff shipped to your house. You don't have to have it shipped to an FFL and registered to you and all that good stuff. So it should make it easier to customize 
replace this pistol. They also built in a thumb rest here. As you can see, it's kind of like a little ramp and it's got some texture to it. It's also ambi. They have an, another thumb rest on this side. So if you're left-handed, you will still be able to use the thumb rest that they have. Kind of curious to see how that's going to feel while you're shooting because it doesn't seem like there's a ton of material here, like an aftermarket thumb rest, but it might be just enough to get extra uh, grip onto the slide and uh, mitigate some recoil. Again, I'll find out when I shoot it. The slide lock and the magazine release are both ambi, so you have them both sides. And to be honest, I, the slide lock is actually better than I thought it would be because it sticks out just enough, but it also doesn't have like a lot of material there. So for me, when I'm gripping this pistol, I don't think my thumb is gonna actuate that slide lock where it'll prevent the last round hold open. So I think that's gonna be good, at least for the way I grip my pistols. And the mag release right here seems good. So I'm not really pressing this and it's not hitting my knuckle here. So it's not preventing me from dropping the mag. So, so far so good. Again, I'll find out more once I start using this pistol in my course of fire classes, but I'll keep an eye on that. The other thing about the mag release is um, it just feels just slightly gritty and maybe that'll smooth out over time from using it. It's like the only way I can describe it. it just feels kind of gritty. But like I said, I'll keep an eye on that too and see if that starts to smooth out as I use it. All right, so now let's move on to the stippling that they put on this gun. So as you can see, there's the same type of stippling texture that you get on a Hellcat. So if you're familiar with a Hellcat, you'll know what the stippling is gonna feel like. The one thing I do like is that they went all the way up here too. So when you're gripping the pistol, your thumb is also getting texture and grip up here. And they put texturing everywhere. They even put texturing on the takedown lever, the thumb rest over here, underneath here, or the trigger guard in front of the trigger guard. The, the guiding rod right here that sticks out has texturing. There's texturing on the back plate here. The mag release button has the same type of texturing on it. And then even on your magazines, there's texturing down here and in the front. I mean, they put texturing everywhere. And let's also talk about the trigger guard. As you can see, there's plenty of room here for a gloved finger. There's this nice high cut up here. And also you have these cuts right here. Uh, it comes with a 1913 rail over here. And uh, I guess we can now move on to the trigger. The trigger has a safety blade. So if you don't push this safety blade in, then you pull the trigger and the trigger will not actuate. And then when you push the blade in, then you notice that the trigger will now actuate. All right, so now let's ghost that trigger. So we're gonna pull the trigger. You see there's just a little bit of travel. You hit a wall. There's a little bit of mush. You feel that break. Also, there's no over travel. There's the reset. And there's the break again. The reset is very short. I like it. I like the trigger. I'll see how it feels when I'm actually shooting it, but so far I like it just, you know, ghosting it here. Now that we talked about all the specs and everything on the pistol, let's move on to the size comparisons. So let's compare it to a PDP. And you could see that the echelon is slightly longer. The height, you could see the echelon is shorter, but also keep in mind the echelon is thinner as well. And let's pull in a Zev. Z320, which is essentially an X-Compact. So from rear to rear, the echelon is longer, which we kind of figured it would be. And then as far as the height, the echelon is slightly taller and the echelon looks just a little bit thinner, not by much. Moving on to a FN 509 Tactical. So with the comp, you can see the echelon is pretty much the same length and the thicknesses, uh, I would say is pretty close to. And then as far as the height is concerned, the echelon is much taller, which is to be expected because this is a compact. Now let's look at the HK VP9. So as far as the length, you can see that the echelon is longer. Okay, not by much, but a little bit longer. As far as thickness, they look pretty comparable. They look like pretty much the same size. And then as far as the height, they look oh, pretty much identical. And why not? Let's just compare it to an X macro. So the length, you can see it's longer. The echelon is thicker. 
And as far as height, it's actually not that much of a difference in height, but the Echelon is taller. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it. That's all the size comparisons I'm gonna do for today. If you thought the video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't already, please subscribe and tell a friend about the channel. Every subscriber helps the channel grow. Also, if you're in the market for CCW insurance, check out Right to Bear. Link is in the description below. Use coupon code UBR10 to get 10% off your entire order. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.